from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host, right down our telephone. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And I might tell you, that this is a very happy day over at the Tom Likas show. Because not only did we just have the best month that we have had since Howard Stern left in the ratings. I mean, the best month. As you know, when Howard Stern left... We've been very honest about this. A very challenging time for radio stations that had Howard's turn. Because Howard had, uh, you know, over 20 great years as a nationally known personality. And uh, he was the, the rock on many of the radio stations where we appear. L.A., Dallas. He had been... Uh, on the station we're on in Seattle and uh, other cities. Uh, many of the radio stations that had aired Howard Stern, rather than waiting the 18 months that I told everybody it was going to take for the stations to recover, simply folded up their tent and started playing uh, pussy music, music for pussies, figuring uh, this is never going to work. But fortunately, uh, not only do I have a very large contract that would prevent any changes from being made here, but also in Los Angeles, but also uh, we have a track record. The radio station's been in the format for 12 years, and we are in our 11th year on 97.1 KLSX in Los Angeles. And so... It would be silly to throw all that away just because Howard Stern doesn't want to play in our sandbox anymore. Howard went off, took his deal, rode off into the sunset, and according to Arbitron, Howard's got just under 2 million listeners on satellite radio, and uh, the bottom line is, as far as I'm concerned, Howard Stern can do anything that he wants at this point. He's got nothing to prove. But he at one time had over 20 million listeners. And, uh, you know, he traded that in for the biggest wad of cash anybody in radio has ever seen. And you know what? Good for him. Good for him. But the rest of us who didn't get half a billion dollars, we soldier on doing what we do. And I sat down with all the big wigs. And I mean the big wigs. Okay? You know, we work for CBS. I sat down with the big wigs here and I said, you know, I've been doing this my whole life. And I've been uh, specifically doing talk radio since I was 23 years old. And people are creatures of habit. So when you lose somebody as big as Howard Stern, a certain amount of the audience is going to start punching around, looking around, and it's going to hurt everybody on the radio station, not just the morning show. But at some point, everyone's going to realize Howard Stern is gone and he's never coming back. And that uh, the rest of the station is still here in terms of Los Angeles. The rest of the radio station is still here. We're still doing what we do. And it would be silly to throw the whole thing out. I mean, my God, we had big audiences for these shows. Big, big, big. And today is a big day for us because 
the predictions are exactly true. I said 18 months, and 18 months after Howard Stern left, we'll put it at July. And in the individual months of July, August, September, and October, we have had the four best months we've had since Howard left, exactly as I predicted. And again, it's just because I've been doing this. I, I don't know how to put oil in my own car. Uh, I don't know how to uh, hammer a nail. <laughs> I, I really don't. I put a hole in the wall. I will ruin the drywall. Don't give me that Molly, Molly Bolt stuff. Okay, I know nothing about this. I know nothing. But one thing I know about is this. Radio and numbers. And I know it takes 18 months to withstand the loss of a great talent like Howard Stern. We were exactly right. But I am looking at the ratings here. And uh, my goodness, look how the Tom Likas show has performed. This is amazing. And I might tell you that, uh, you know, everybody worked very hard on this. During this period of time, back in April, we left Westwood One and went to CBS. We physically moved our studio from God awful Culver City to a secret location in Hollywood that we're not allowed to mention. Boy, I'll bet they'd love to be associated with us now that we're number one. <laughs> uh, we had to train a new engineer. We lost uh, Brett Abbott, who'd been with us for many years. And Art Webb came in and had to learn on the job about how we do things. And I was very honest with you. Uh, we were training Art, and sometimes Art was not going to be able to find what what Brett had hidden somewhere, or how he'd filed something. Sometimes the sound effect wasn't going to come out on time, but we literally were, were training Art on the job to do the job because we did not have time. You know, Brett gave us a couple of weeks' notice, which is standard. But um, Brett had a lot of knowledge, a lot of acquired experience, and Art could not acquire all that in two weeks. So we literally had to train Art as best we could, and then when we got on the air, just throw ourselves at your, ourselves at your mercy and say, hey, it's going to take this guy a while to, uh, to understand all the things that Brett understood and to be able to find everything that Brett created over the years or everything that he has indexed or filed or staffed somewhere. Um, and we dealt with the loss of Howard Stern uh, over a longer term. And, um, of course, all the negative publicity from very bad management moves like you know, in other cities, uh, other from where we are, putting David Lee Roth on the air or some of the other nonsense they did that didn't work. And it kind of besmirched our good name, a good name that we built up over many years. So we've been fighting a lot of battles here. And this is not your problem, okay? All you want to do is turn on the radio. And when you turn on the radio, get the same good stuff you've been getting all these years. So I, I pretty much try to be professional and avoid talking about this stuff. But now that we have surmounted it, now that we have met the challenge, now that we have overcome all of the obstacles in our way, I am proud to say on behalf of Gary Zabransky and Dean D'Amelio and Art Webb and our former colleague Brett Abbott, I'm proud to say that we met the challenge and our numbers are now back up where they were when Howard Stern was with us in Los Angeles. Now, we never had low ratings on this show, never. Never. They were never low ratings. But we had been number one in a variety of demographics, and when Howard left, it didn't matter if you put, you know, Jesus Christ in the morning, or whoever you put on in the morning, you know, uh, O.J. Simpson, you know how radio has just become a big whorehouse, uh, putting people on the air who have no business being on the air just to get ratings, and it works for a month or two, but finally you realize that, what was her name? Who was the chick who, uh, oh, Tanya Harding, didn't she have a radio show in Portland? You know, after a while you're realizing this is not a radio professional, this is a chick with a crowbar, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, the bottom line here is that uh, 
that we have uh, continued to just whack away at this and continue to do a good job every day. And I always believe if you come in every day with your lunch pail uh, in this business uh, and just keep giving people what they want, that it will pay off. And it is paying off. I'm very excited about this. I'm very proud of our guys here, okay, because these guys, you know, we just all held together. We didn't let all that negativity poison us. And by the way, you can tell from some of the things that have gone on in this show that uh, over the past year and a half, there are people running around like their pants are on fire, all panicking. And I told them, please do not panic. Please just relax because it's going to take 18 months. By the way, back when I told them that, back when Howard was leaving, Everyone said they understood, oh, yeah, you're right, Tom. Yeah, it'll probably take about 18 months. And then about two months in, everybody was freaking out. They're not freaking out anymore. Look at these numbers, baby. Unbelievable. I mean, our 12-plus number is 40% above where it was a year ago. A 40% increase. We are up to almost a three-share now. And uh, we just missed it last month. We had a 2.9 last month, 12 plus. Well, we're not, we've never been a 12 plus show. We've always been big just on men. 12 plus means anybody, male or female, the whole ball of wax. We've always been a show for guys. And by the way, don't let the, uh, the, the morons who do these sports radio formats fool you. Because once again, if you add up the shares of every sports talk radio in Los Angeles, every sports talk radio station in the afternoon, the whole bunch of those people it does not add up to what we have. 12 plus, period. End of story. Let's take a look here at 18 to 34. 18 to 34 is off the charts. This is adults, 18 to 34. It's not just guys, by the way. Adults, 18 to 34. Our uh, numbers uh, went from in the spring, 2.3. Summer, 3.9. Now we're at a 4.6. And that's an average of three months. Last month was a 5.3, folks. Which puts us way close to the top. Tell you right now. I mean, uh, 18 to 34. Look at that. Outrageous. Then you look at uh, 25 to 54. This is the money demo. A year ago, we had a 2.6. And in spring, we had a 2.7. 2.7 gave way to a 3.5 in the summer. Now up to a 3.7. So, uh, 2.6 to a 3.7. That is about a 40% increase. That's, that's all right. It's pretty damn good. Now, here's one I don't even pay any attention to. It's 35 to 64. That's the one that, like, the AM stations pay attention to, but we don't. I mean, Jesus. A year ago in that demo, we were a 2.2. We're now at a 2.6. And... We beat stations like KFWB. That's their target audience. We beat K KFWB is an all-news station. We beat them. <laughs> Can you believe that? We also beat KNX 3564, another all-news station. I, I mention them because they're also owned by CBS. We beat those stations. It's pretty amazing. The one we did not beat in that demo and... Congratulations to them. K-Earth. And uh, another CBS-owned station, uh, which now, and for the past couple of years, has employed uh, the man I think is the best program director on planet Earth, Johnny K. And, and K-Earth is just ripping the roof off the place. The numbers are ridiculous. And congrats on my, uh, to my good buddy, uh, Shotgun Tom Kelly over there, who... Uh, should be partying along with everybody else. Wow. That's nice. 
But uh, here's the coup de grace, folks. Men 18 plus. This is the number we built our reputation on. It's a show for guys. And if we don't win in men, there's no point being here. Shut off the lights. Turn off the transmitter. A year ago, fall 2006, we had a 3.3, which was pretty good, but not as good as it was in the Howard Stern days. Um, spring of 07, we were 3.4, about the same, treading water. But uh, spring to summer, we went 3.4 to 4.0. And then in this latest trend, we went to a 4.6. And for the individual month of October, we had a 5.0. And that put us in first place in men in Los Angeles. First place. Number one. That's first place. I'm not saying first place English speaking. We're not uh, pulling out the Korean stations and the Spanish stations and saying, well, we're number one if you take it. No, no. We're number one among all radio stations in the afternoon in Los Angeles in men. Number one. Number one. <laughs> yeah. Is that amazing? By the way, just for giggles. <laughs> Are you aware that we uh, we're up in women thirty three percent year to year? Even even women are listening. It's pretty outrageous. Uh, so thanks to our staff, Gary and Dino and Art. Thank you to uh, the folks with us at uh, CBS Radio. Do we have Jack Silver's theme music ready? I mean, might as well give him some congratulations here. He... What's that, Art? Oh, hit it. Why not? This is Jack Silver. Give him proper congratulations. The program director of Mighty 7.1 KLSX. And to Bob Moore, the general manager. And uh, I don't have to name all the people who used to work here at CBS who... No longer work here, who dissed us and marginalized us and didn't think we could get the job done. Of course, they're all sitting home now setting up new websites for themselves. They're, they're not working at any radio companies, but uh, all of you know who you are. The cream rises to the top, and everybody else at home sending out resumes. Isn't that right, boys? You betcha. Anyway, uh, again, number one in men. We are number one, and it's the first time we've been number one in men since Howard Stern left. So I, I just have to say one more thing before we go to the break here. And we'll take some of your calls. You may want to react to this. I know some of you think this is just self-indulgent, but you know what? If you don't toot your own horn, who will? God damn, this company didn't spend any money on marketing, for Christ's sake. Remember the CBS motto. We don't buy advertising. We only sell it. There's no marketing going on here. Absolutely not. But seriously speaking, um, I'm sure some of you have taken advantage of our marginally lower ratings that we've had since Howard left. Well, I recommend that you uh, you call the sales department immediately and get on board before that rate card uh, starts getting jacked up. Because seriously, when you are number one in men, uh, the rate is going up. And uh, that number for the sales department, 323-971-9710, you want to call them immediately and book your time now because as we get to the end of the year and the holiday shopping season, trust me, boys, you're going to be sorry you didn't uh, get back on the gravy train here with us. And those of you, those few of you who have uh, taken a wait-and-see attitude, uh, you, there's no time to wait anymore. I'm telling you that right now. The Tom Langer Show, once again, number one in men in Los Angeles, where it belongs. And your telephone call's coming up next. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. What's the name of this show? It's the Tom, Tom Likas, Likas Show. Show. That's right. So, I'm the boss here. The Tom Likas Show. Show. 
sound like a show. Number one, with man in Southern California, number one. In the most competitive radio market in America, 81 radio stations. More revenue than even New York City, which is called the number one market because of its population. But lots of those people ride the railroad, they ride the subway, they ride the bus. They don't listen to radio like people in Southern California do. There's more revenue in the radio business here. There's more stations here in Southern California. And uh, despite all of that competition, we are number one with men. We have the number one choice of men in Southern California. It's official. We were number one with men when Howard was here, and now we've done it without Howard. So it's kind of like they, uh, they always wonder about Kobe Bryant. You know, the guy never won a championship without Shaq. And therefore, people, it doesn't matter how much, the fact the guy won three rings, nobody gives him any credit because he's never done it without Shaq. And I know there are people looking askance at me saying, yeah, you were number one when you had Howard Stern in the morning. But uh, what happens now? And I think many of them work at this company. Okay. But uh, guess what, folks? I did what Kobe ought to do. You know, I put my head down. I worked with my teammates here, worked hard, passed the ball a lot. And uh, finally, now we are number one again. Howard is becoming a memory around here because he went off to the world of satellite radio. He's gone off to greener pastures for him. I don't know how it feels to have, I honestly, and I don't say this to be a wise ass, okay, but these ratings came out recently for satellite radio, and Howard has one-tenth the audience he had in terrestrial radio, one-tenth and, uh, you know, money is great, and not, but nobody loves it more than I do. <laughs> but you just got to wonder how that feels. But uh, we are back to the same audience we had before. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Carlos. Carlos, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you doing? Do you hey. care? Oh, you know I care, Dad. Congratulations, man. Thank you, son. You, know, you are the you are the true king of all media. Forget Howard, man. Because you know what, you you stay on here, and you know what, you help out everybody in 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 the world, man. Because you know what, I've been listening to you for six years. If it wasn't for you, you know what, some bitch would probably have my balls. Oh, no doubt about it. So you know what, you know I want to thank you, and you know you're doing a great service. You know, I coach high school football, and I tell all my kids to listen to you after football season is over, you know, so they could grow, you know, grow up and, and be like his listeners like me, you know? Sounds good to me. Uh, what do the parents think about the fact that you recommend the Tom Likas show? Oh, half of the parents listen to your show, and they love it. Perfect. Very well, nice. You know, well, you know, but anyway, just wanted to call you and tell you, you know, thanks for the service, congratulations, and can you blow me up, please? You know I can. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here comes Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, uh, congratulations on the great numbers. Way Thank you, go. Eric. Well, I, I just wanted to say it. I think that uh, Howard Stern has is, is kind of become uh, irrelevant because I, you know, I used to listen to him all the time, I, and and I missed him for a few months, and then he kind of got replaced by Adam and everybody, and you know, I always stuck with you and. Well, that's, that's why I always said it was going to take 18 months for this transformation to take place. There's a mourning period. Some people get angry because they're like, what did you guys do to alienate Howard Stern? And I understand their feelings. Uh, so that takes a bit of time to work its way out of the system, just like if you ate some bad sushi. But uh, at some point, eventually, you start feeling better and uh, you start uh, going back to your old patterns. Yeah, and I mean... it. It seemed like a real hassle to hook up the the satellite and everything like that. I didn't want to have an extra bill to have to pay for it. I already pay you know 150 bucks for cable every month, so I didn't want an extra bill and the inconvenience of it all. And I just I don't know. I just sort of stuck with uh, what you guys were doing, and I'm happy now. You know, I, Adam's show has been through a few transformations, but now it's fine, and and your show's always good. And so you know, I just kind of stuck with you guys and. 
And uh, I, you know, I don't Howard Stern. I don't even I don't even see him on the talk radio shows anymore. Uh, I mean, well, you'll never see me demean Howard Stern. He is legendary in the broadcasting business. Uh, he revolutionized the broadcasting business, not just uh, the way radio shows sound, uh, but also the business of being on the air. Um, uh, people get paid more than ever. It's uh, a better business. It is seen now as. Uh, more than just the lowest rung of the entertainment industry, and he deserves all the credit in the world for having done that. Right. Howard now has okay. gone off to start a new revolution, doing something else, and uh, I, I, for one, wish him nothing but the best and would never, ever demean anything he's done. Uh, it's a risk what he's doing, and who knows, ultimately, where he will stand in the uh, media food chain when it's all over. One thing's for sure, he'll have half a billion dollars more than he had before, and you got to give the guy credit for that. That's true. He, but he used to be like in the national spotlight, and you hear about him on Entertainment Tonight every now and then. He pops well, up on Letterman every now and then. That's a decision. Now, by the, like, by the way, by the way, he is still on Letterman now and then, uh, by, which surprises me, by the way. But nonetheless, he, uh, because it's you know Letterman's produced by CBS, I'm always surprised that he's on the Letterman show. It's okay with me, but it's it's surprising. Uh, but I will say this, you know. You get to a point where you have to decide, do I want half a billion dollars or do I have a big ego? And um, he took the half billion dollars. And can I tell you something? I would have done exactly what he did if I was offered half a billion dollars. As I have always said, I would talk into this beer bottle. Hello out there, everybody. I would talk into that bottle. Yeah. Uh, if you gave me half a billion dollars, I would sit in the I would sit in this closet over here. I would close the door in the dark, and I would talk into a garden hose if you would give me half a billion dollars. I, if someone wanted to pay me half a billion dollars just to stop doing my show because they hate my guts, and they said, yeah. here's half a billion dollars to go away, I'd take it. Because just like Howard Stern, I don't have that kind of ego. So keep in mind, I mean, Howard did trade off some of his national notoriety for cash, yeah, and and I would do the exact same thing, but nobody's going to get an offer like he's like the Alex Rodriguez of broadcasting. That no one's going to make as much money as he does, and uh, you know you have to decide: Do I want to do the David Letterman show and make thirty million dollars a year or whatever he made, or do I want to get a hundred million dollars a year and only be on half as often? You got it. Yeah, I I, I think he's I think he's uh, he's there. You know, some people are obviously listening to him. But, uh, you know, his, his, his relevance in the national spotlight has, has well, finished. Well, and, and that's, you know what, I don't disagree with that. But, again, he made a choice, a financial decision. And he's finally getting paid. And, uh, by the way, I'm a lifelong broadcaster. I met Howard, and I understand uh, what, what it's like to be in this business. I mean, the guy now is getting paid for all the years he slept on a mattress in a, you know, in a one-bedroom apartment. Um, I completely understand where he's coming from. I would have done the exact same thing if I had that offer, even if it meant nobody ever saw me again. Yeah, I don't think anybody would have turned down that that kind of money. That's my point. Yes, he gives up some national prominence because, according to Arbitron, he's got one tenth the audience he had before. But the premise was of him going over there was that he was doing it for free speech and all that. He didn't say he was going over there for the money. Well, I, I understand that he didn't say that, but, you know, again, uh, uh, put it this way. He said he couldn't do the show that he wanted to do, which was the show he had been doing when he started getting his show cut like Swiss cheese. Does he even get, does he even get callers? With that yes. Speech? Oh, Look, if you've got two million listeners, you're getting callers. Sure you are. Yeah. I mean, you have to understand the accomplishment of Howard Stern. I mean, the guy had 20 million listeners. But, but even two million listeners is a lot of listeners. And by the way, he is far and away the most listened to channel on Sirius Satellite Radio. Oh, yeah. Dwarfing yeah. any. No, but I've seen the ratings. It dwarfs anything else they have, including NFL football and everything else they do. Oh, yeah. Well, Tom, you're doing a great job. Uh, I want you to take me out of Kobe and African Tribal, please. All right, Eric, here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 
Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. My take on your listener base is that they are very subpar in the intelligence IQ department. Oh, and you know, it's, it's, really, it's got to be a problem to have low self-esteem in the way you do. You really should not see yourself that way. I mean, uh, I'm sure you're much more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tonight, uh, Brian Whitless tonight, probably about 8 o'clock, will have to be talking about his ratings as well, so you want to stay tuned for that. Coming up, if you listen to 97.1 KLS here in Southern California, Conway and Whitless tonight at 8 o'clock. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you? Doing great. Good. Well, I just wanted to call you to tell you why I listen to this show. Being a 27-year-old woman, I listen to your show to get a man's perspective. Well, that's what we always say. Uh, women want to know how men think. What better way than by listening to the number one show among men? Exactly. You know, men are not as communicative as most women obviously would like them to be. So when you listen to your show, you can see, like, okay, well, that's why they do this, and that's why they think that. Right. And it's it's just a great opportunity to, you know stop fights with my boyfriend and, you know, understand why he's doing what he's doing. And you find out that men are not as complicated as you thought we were. Exactly. It's very, <laughs> a lot more simple than you think they are. We're hungry, we're horny, we're thirsty. <laughs> exactly. John. But I, I just thank you for uh, being there for women like me, and uh, thank you for doing a good job. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for that. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? Uh, not much, Mike. Hey, congratulations, man. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, I just want to I want to let you know that um, I was actually turned on to your show by a female colleague of mine years ago. Really? Yes. Did I have sex with her? You know what? I think she wishes you did. Really? Yeah, really. Have her give me a call. <laughs> I'll do that. And uh, I just want to let you know that you guys got it locked down. I mean, morning, afternoon, third shift. I mean, it's it's a great program. And, I mean, I, I discovered as I get older, I'm 24 now, that I kind of wanted to hear more about what's going on around me, to, to pick up subjects, you know what I mean, like topics that, you know, matter to me. Yeah, of course. And it's, it's amazing because I have a six-year-old son, and I think that it's it's only getting better in that sense because even my son in the morning – you know, if I leave it on uh, another radio station, he'll be like, can we put on the station where they talk? And he'll want to listen to Adam Carolla. I love that. And it's it's amazing to me. Like, I was never like that as a kid growing up. You and I him. also want to mention that, you know, uh, with Howard Stern and all, I think he's a genius. And uh, I used to love his work, but, but now he has no boundaries. And to me, that doesn't make it fun. Like, I like to push boundaries. I like to listen to people push boundaries and push buttons. Now, again, everybody has their own take on this, and Howard has his own take. My take is I enjoy the challenge of being funny within the within the constrictions. Exactly. exactly. Because That's if I could just come on and say F word, F word, F word every sentence. It's no fun. Well, the thing is, you, you still have to go ahead and do a show. Now, I still think Howard Stern does a great show. But there's a lot of other people, a lot of other people at satellite radio, who once they got all the freedom they've been demanding all this time, you can now see the weakness in their argument because in reality they just say the f word a lot and they're not that funny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I honestly haven't listened to much of it. I know of friends that, that have switched over and bought the whole thing and pay it, but to me it sounds like you know you get a hundred and some odd channels and it. it's all it's all crap, you know. Just like the radio, you may have less channels of crap, but it's still all crap. Right. But, uh, I want to say 
you know, thank you very much for always being there for me. Good advice all the time. And uh, and that's about it, man. Congratulations and enjoy it. So Mike, in. thank you so much. Appreciate the call. Diane on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Diane. Yes. Yes. Tom? Tom? Yes. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations on your numbers. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. So how are you, Tom? Do you care, darling? I really do. I do. I'm, I'm doing great. Good. This is the best day of a couple of years. This is incredible. I, I could imagine. I'm so happy for you. I got to tell you something. My kids, I have a 21-year-old, a 9-year-old, and an 8-year-old. And I was at the museum over the weekend and there was this guy in line with his girlfriend, and she was bossing him around, and he he was just standing there taking it from her. He said, she says to him, take the jacket, I'm cold. He takes it off. Go get me a coat. He goes and gets it. She's running him all over the place. My nine-year-old says to him, you need to listen to Tom like it. <laughs> so then my eight-year-old, Gives him a piece of the program and has it written on there, 97.1. He says, put this in your pocket. You're going to need it. I love that. Do you love that? And my kids love you. They're crazy about you. When it's, you know, when it's not too age appropriate for them, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll like, lower the volume and they, you know, yeah. lose it. But for the most part, they love your show. And I get in trouble for it, you know, from the school sometimes because it's, you know, they say things about women that they don't really care for. But right. so what? Well, but you know course. what? They've, they've, they're always going to, you know, no love, no love kind of thing. They're not going to get screwed by women. It's not going to let them. Yes. Well, as you know, schools run by the vaginarchy. And <laughs> they're going to get so, very upset, of course. Yeah. But you know what? It's better than listening to the satanic, you know, rock and roll stuff. You know, this is like part of life. It is what it is, you know, and it's out there. Well, we're losing you there, Diane, but thank you so much. That's a great story. I'm enjoying it. Stefan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How are you, Tom? Doing great. Uh, I just moved to L.A. a few weeks ago from Cleveland. Uh, my buddy Matt said to me, he said, you got to do two, uh, three things when you get to L.A. first, because I'd never been here. He said, you got to go to In-N-Out Burger, you got to go to the Saddle Ranch Pickup Girls, and you listen to Tom Likas all the time. I, I love pretty, that. I pretty much listened to it, and uh, not that order. We actually uh, started listening to you first, and it paid off dividends at the uh, Saddle Ranch. Oh, perfect. <laughs> just want to say you're doing an unbelievable job. I've never, ever called radio. Uh, yeah, like I said, new to that's LA. Because you're, that's because you lived in Cleveland. Yeah, well, it's the the, the Grace guys cover the radio there. Yeah. Uh, yeah and you, I, and I just heard about your ratings, number one. Number one in men. Uh, no show in the afternoon has more male listeners than we do. That's awesome, man. And you get you have a, a lot, a lot of female listeners too. Well, that's the thing. Uh, female listenership is up over thirty percent year to year. It's amazing. That's great. And my, another friend of mine said, "Do you listen to Like Us yet?" And uh, his roommate, oh, you know. Comes and steps in the conversation and goes, oh, that's what all new people do when they move to L.A. They listen to Like Us. My buddy said, I've been here seven years. I've been listening the whole time. So, How great is that? Oh, it's good stuff, buddy. Well, good stuff. Welcome to L.A. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm I sure I'll uh, see you around. Oh, you you certainly will. Let's go to James on the Tom Like Us show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Good, good, good. I just called to let you know. I started listening to your show when I was about six years old. I'm turning 21 on the 21st here. Wow. And uh, surprisingly enough, my mother was the one who uh, played it when I was a child, and I would listen to it. So there you go, woman how, audience. How great is my that? My ex-girlfriends have all listened to you, so you have a great show, and I want to thank you a lot. Congratulations you know I, on the rating. You don't have a girlfriend now, do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, jeez. I know, I I've know. Had, I've had you for 14 years, and you haven't learned anything yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to give up sometime, I guess. Oh, well, yeah, but you're a little early for that, Jim. No, Tell no, you know. no. It's definitely not the end. It's not the end. I'm just trying everything out, you know? All right. I understand. And I thank you very much for the call. The Tom Likas Show.